Hello, welcome back to Conversation Way and the first video of 2024. Um, today is going to be a video on a Range Rover Vogue. As you can see there, I'm going to tell you how much I paid for it, um, whether it's worth it and whether you should buy one at cheap as well. So, buying this Range Rover, I paid a thousand pounds for it. Very cheap for a Range Rover. Uh, it's on a 56 plate. Uh, it's a three litre TD6 Vogue. Uh, it's one of the last ones on a 56 plate. After that, they started getting facelifted upon my facelift. Um, I will explain to you what that means um, and show you the differences. Starting with the front of the car, the subtle differences from this shape to the previous shape um are the headlights so on this one the headlights are one complete unit on the old ones um you'll you'll notice that they have a, a divide there for a separate indicator uh, the grill is slightly different even though this grill is the wrong grill for this car it's for a supercharged uh version i believe um but the one i had originally was the three slats and i feel i feel like it's a bit bit dated and could and looks a lot better with this current grill on um, the bumper on the facelift is also slightly different, not too different, but I think it's just the middle bit down there, which are a bit different. Fog lights, parking sensors are usually on all Range Rovers. Um, so there's that. On the sides, they normally come with different side vents as well. These, I believe, are supercharged as well. Again, wrong for the car, but they will be getting changed. Uh, they're actually getting changed for the three slats, um, like the later L405, just to make it and bring it up to a bit more modern. Um, wheels are pretty standard along all Range Rovers, as is a bit of rust, which you'll, which you'll come to find if you are looking at a Range Rover. Uh, coming around to the back, uh, the differences around the back, I believe, aren't actually that different. I think the bumpers are very similar on the rear. Um, lights again are very similar on the rear uh, split tailgate if you're buying an L322 you will have a split tailgate which you know you have up and then you have the bottom part that comes down uh, the exhaust the exhaust is custom on this car I haven't done it it was already on there when I brought it uh, it's had the rear back box deleted and what looks to be it looks like a focus st exhaust on the back but whether it is whether it isn't it sounds all right and uh yeah okay coming in to the inside of the car so inside subtle differences from a facelift to a pre-facelift uh none none in the front the only thing that you will find that's different is the stereo so the stereo looks a little bit different. Uh, this is a Vogue model, so I'm not an expert on all things Range Rover, um, but I believe that Vogue models are the top of the range. Uh, you've got HSE um, and other autobiography and things like that. Autobiography, um, and you get all sorts of different versions, um, over Finch versions, autobiography, uh, Westminster versions they all have slightly subtle differences some are different with the seats some you get a, per, um, a perforated headline in uh, with also leather on the headline in mine is just uh, fabric cream fabric as with the interior it's cream seats the seats haven't held up too bad actually considering this is a 2006 model there's no real bad wear that's the worst there but and a little bit there I suppose but actually it doesn't actually seem too bad steering wheel i've added since i've had this car i've added those they're from powerful uk um about the only reasonable uh, pricing they have on their website so if you're looking for range rover accessories they have plenty on there but they are very very expensive and it seems to be that after reading some reviews they get quite a lot of their stuff from china so just be careful and go on to go on the um chinese websites aliexpress wish Team you, whatever you can find, because I'm sure you can find the bits on there cheaper. 
being the Vogue, I have had one of these before, which was a Vogue, but it didn't have as many options as what this one has. So this one's got Harman Kardon Logic 7. So it's got additional speakers all dotted around the car. So you've got a center speaker up there, which I didn't have in my last one. Uh, obviously you've got tweeters in there. You've got the mids and a door speaker down there. Going in the back, again, pretty standard in the back. Leather seats, not too badly worn, could do with a bit of a, more of a clean. Uh, it's got heated seats in the back, not all come with heated seats, but what they all do come with is that getting scratched and looking dreadful. So that will have to be coming off at some point and getting painted. And the additional speakers you can see also are in the rear of the boot pillars. So it adds for a nice, nice loud volume. Um, one thing I have noticed since actually doing this video, that says Land Rover. That says Land Rover. That says airbag. So it would be quite weird to think that it didn't have airbags in there, but obviously it might not if it says Land Rover and not airbag. Um, we are missing one over there, but we've got one of those to replace um, other things in the inside it's got heated seats not all Range Rovers come with heated seats believe it or not um, you will find that most do uh, it's got dual zone climate control manual dual zone climate control I add again this is common it's not the greatest of coatings you'll find it on older cars especially Range Rovers and old school BMWs and things like that they will flake off other than that leather dash which looks lovely and overall all in all it actually isn't a bad car for a thousand pound is what i paid for it uh, the condition is quite nice um, it just needs a few bits doing to it but we'll get onto the reason why this was only a thousand pound bearing in mind when i got the car it needed an mot so i had it mot'd um, i only had the car for a week before it needed an mot uh, the car got MOT'd, it failed. It only failed on an adjustment of the handbrake. It needed some new drop links and it also needed the door handle cable because the cable snapped. Um, very common on X5s. Uh, these are very largely shared roughly with the X5, um, engine wise anyway, probably not the rest of the body, but engine wise, few of the electrics, very similar to an X5. Um, it cost 220 quid to get through an MOT, which isn't too bad on a on an old Range Rover. So it was quite lucky. Uh, it didn't fail on anything else. So bearing in mind, I paid a thousand pound for the car, 210 pound on an MOT to pass that. And yes, it does need a few bits, which I have already got. Uh, they have cost 140 pounds um, off a wonderful guy off Facebook. You'll have to look him up if you ever want any Range Rover parts. His name is Chris J Parts. I'll leave a link in the description for his Facebook page um, and a mobile number in case you want to get hold of him. He lives in Derby. Um, great guy. Really reasonable on prices and has loads of Range Rover parts, whether that's P38, L322 or an L320 Sport. Uh, he has parts for all of those. Um, and yeah, it's going to be it's going to be quite a nice little few episodes on the Range Rover. Um, the consistency hasn't been very good on the channel because me, Hass and Ollie, we all have normal jobs uh, and we don't often get the time to do these, but we've decided 2024, we're going to make more of a crack of it, be more consistent with videos. And there's definitely going to be a lot of Range Rover videos, that's for sure for this year. Um, so stick with us. We will put some more videos up as soon as we can. Uh, and if you've got any questions, leave it in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It's free, doesn't cost anything. Uh, and give the video a like. And we'll see you very soon in the next Range Rover video.